The topic of this video is using the exponential law equation to solve exponential growth and decay problems. Method 2, the long way, which is the exponential law equation. The equation associated with the exponential law says that an amount a varies with time t according to the function a of t equals a naught e to the kt, where k greater than zero represents uninhibited growth and k less than zero represents uninhibited decay. The value a subscript zero, or sometimes said a naught, represents the amount at time t equals zero, and k is called the growth or decay rate. The value of k is described as a percent, but used in the equation as a decimal. Once the values of a naught and k are known, then the relationship between time and amount is known. That is to say, if the time is known, then the amount can be computed, and if the amount is known, then the time can be computed. This method takes longer to use, but will always work. Now, before we move on to reading the next paragraph, I have several comments that I'd like to share with you about what I just read. So I'm going to go back to the beginning, and I'm going to provide a little detail as I read one more time. The equation associated with the exponential law says that an amount a varies with time t according to the function a of t equals a naught e to the kt where k greater than zero represents uninhibited growth, and k less than zero represents uninhibited decay. My first comment is that there is one equation for both growth and decay. If k is greater than zero, it's growth, and if k is less than zero, it's decay. Okay, the next sentence. The value a subscript zero, or a sub zero, or a naught, is an amount a naught is an amount, the starting amount, the amount when the time is zero. And k is called the growth or the decay rate. The value of k is described as a percent but used in the equation as a decimal. My next comment, this is a lot like the interest rate. When you're dealing with financial models, the interest rate r is talked about as a percent in words, but has to be converted to a decimal before you can put it in the equation. R and K both have that same property. Once the values of A naught and K are known, then the relationship between time and amount is known. The reason why this skill is so important in the real world is because it allows us to predict the future. Once you have your equation, if someone gives you an amount, you can predict the time when you'll have that amount. And if someone gives you some future time, you can predict the amount you'll have at that time. Okay, those are all of my comments. Let's move on now to our next paragraph. As long as the starting time is zero, the value of k can be determined using the adder a and either the multiplier m or the divider d. Here are two formulas which are going to come in very handy. k equals the natural log of m all divided by a. Or, in the case of decay, k equals the natural log of 1 over d all divided by a. Now, a few comments about this last paragraph. You have now heard about two different methods of solving exponential growth and decay problems, using patterns and using the exponential law equation. You should always try starting with using patterns, because if that method works, great, it's faster, easier, and better. But if that method fails, because the value you're looking for doesn't appear in your table, then adjust to using the exponential law equation and know that you'll get the k value in your exponential law equation from your previous attempts at using patterns. The patterns are going to give you the adder a and either the multiplier m or the divider d, depending on whether you have growth or decay. Growth if you have a multiplier, decay if you have a divider. So both methods are important to know because the first method, which is shorter and easier, supports your success in the second method if it turns out that the first method cannot be used.